Hi, today's video is going to be on the RHL triangle congruency method. We are going to talk about how to prove triangles congruent using this method. Often it's referred to as the HL method. In order to show triangles congruent, you need to show corresponding hypotenuses. That's where your H is coming to play. And the corresponding legs are congruent. That's where the L is going to come into play. That's why it's the HL method. Well, think about it. What do we need in order to have hypotenuses? The only way you have a hypotenuse, that vocabulary word, comes when you have a right angle, which means we have a right triangle. So the only way that we can have a hypotenuse is if I have a right angle. So I need to also make sure that if I'm showing that I have a hypotenuse, I'm showing that I have a right triangle. Which brings us to how many pieces do we need to show triangles congruent? We talked all through our last video that we need three pieces of information to prove a triangle is congruent. So if I'm just looking at HL, my mind might start wandering off and think, oh, I only need two. I just need the hypotenuse that I need to leg. That's why I call this theorem the RHL theorem. But otherwise, you may hear it referenced by someone else as the HL theorem. But it is the RHL because we need a right angle in order to have the hypotenuse. And then we have our leg. So again, the R is from the right angle. The H is from the hypotenuse, and the L comes from the leg. And I find this less confusing because now we do have the three pieces of information that we continue to reference that we need in order to prove triangles congruent. So we're going to determine which postulate, if any, can be used to prove the triangles congruent. Then we are going to write that congruency statement. So we look through our diagram. We need three pieces of information. I look at what I'm provided with. When I look here, I see this right angle. These two right angles match up awesome. I see these two circles marking AB and BC congruent. That's awesome. That's a side length. And then we don't actually, we can just say that's an angle. This is a side length. And I'm out of information. We know there's a couple things that we can get from the diagram. And one of those things is a shared side. We see that BD is part of both triangles, so that's another side. As we go through, and we're trying to figure out which postulate is, I see an angle, a side, and a side. So you may start to write down, oh, these two are congruent by angle, side, side. And we realize that we have the booty theorem. We can't use the booty theorem to prove our triangle's congruent. This is where RHL comes in. So at any point you start to write down the booty theorem, the only way we can save the booty theorem is if it's RHL. So we look at the angle that we have, and that angle is a right angle. Good start. That side across the BC is the hypotenuse. It's across from the right angle. And that shared side is the leg. So these two triangles are congruent by RHL. Now we have to look at corresponding order. A, B, and then D. So as I name this triangle, I want to make sure that I'm hitting all of my pieces in the same order. So I'm going through that circle side to the shared side to the unnamed side. So I'm going to go from the circle side to the shared side to the unnamed side. So this is going to be triangle C, B, D. All right, we go on to our next one. As we look at our pieces, although this is the same diagram, you have to look at how it's marked. This was marked as a right angle. This is not. So when we look here, these are congruent angles, congruent sides, and then we have this shared side. And as we go through this, we get that dreaded booty theorem. So this is not going to be possible. We can't prove triangles congruent. Oops, wrong congruency symbol there. Can't prove triangles congruent by the dreaded booty theorem. All right, this is our last one. As we look at this set, we look at what we're provided with, and we see that these two sides are congruent. 
these two angles are congruent, and then once again we have that shared side. We look at the order that our pieces are coming in, and we want to look at consecutive pieces. So I'm not going to go from here and go around this direction, because if I start here and then I go here, I'm skipping an angle, I'm skipping a side, I'm skipping an angle. We want to go towards our next closest congruent piece. I'm going to start at the end. So I'm not going to start at the angle, I'm going to start at one of the edges. So here we have our side, then I go to the next closest piece, which is the angle, and then the next consecutive side. So these two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Since I started with angle A, we went from A to B to D. So I want to follow that same motion on the other side, so I'm going to go from C to B to D. And that is it for our video today.